everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.net 2013 GUI video. In this particular video, what we're going to do from now on in this playlist, we're going to focus on specific objects in every single video. So for this one, I'm focusing on the Windows form, okay? And nothing but. I'm not going to look at buttons. I'm not going to look at text boxes in any detail. Just forms, okay? And how we use certain properties, functions, and events for forms. And then the next video, we'll deal with another control. Now, if you're not interested in looking at these at all and just interested in creating some programs, I'm going to have a second playlist running along, or sorry, coinciding with this one. I'm going to create videos, which I'll create sort of calculators and word processors and little mini projects just to hopefully skill you up and give you more, I suppose, applications than what these videos are going to show. So to start with, what we're going to do, that let's have a look at the form, okay? Everyone's probably familiar with just a typical form, Okay, everyone's used them if you used a Windows application before. Okay, and you know they can come in different sizes and colors and styles, and they can have different controls all over them. But what they really are is just a container for other controls to be added on top of. Okay, so I've got my form here right in front of me. Okay, I can resize it, I can change the colors and the text and the icons, but really it doesn't do anything but contain other controls such as buttons text boxes, radio buttons, check boxes, and I could keep going. But essentially, that's what they are. All right? And right away, let's dive into the properties of a form. And I'm only going to cover sort of one specific to a form, because later on down the road, we're going to look at things like back color and all that stuff with buttons and text boxes. And I think it's more useful if we just focus on the forms one. So personally, the first thing I always look at is the name. And with a form, the good naming font, if this is going to be your main form, you start with FRM, which is short for form, and you put the name of the form straight after it like that. Okay, you'll notice it's all lowercase for form, and then an uppercase M for the next word. And that's essentially the standard naming format I use personally all the way down the line. As we continue on, let's have a look at the accept button. So if you read the descriptions down here, you probably get a pretty good idea of what they're going to do. And this one in particular, you choose a button that's on your form. So let's quickly jam a button on there. Okay. And you can set this button to be the accept button. So whenever the user presses the enter key, all right, it's essentially like them clicking on that button. Right, I think I've explained that in a previous video, but once again, there it is. The next one is very, very similar, is the cancel button. All right. So when they press the escape key on the keyboard, it's like they've pressed that button as well. Okay. Really, you should use a second button for that, but I've just selected the same button. Doesn't matter. All right. Moving along, we have got one that I think a lot of people overlook, but is probably one of the most important ones: is form border style. Okay. It changes the actual border around the edge of the form. So right now it's set to sizable, which means if I play my program. I can grab the edge and I can resize it to any size that I would like. Okay. Another setting for that is fixed single. Okay. And what that means is I can't actually change the border size. So when I start the program, you'll notice I'm not able to change the border. Okay. I can't click and drag it. However, one thing I can do is I can maximize the form, and I'll show you how to stop that later on. Okay. Another style is none. That might be interesting. This is used a lot for 2D and 3D games when you just want a quick borderless window for your game to be displayed on. A lot of these people use none for that. Okay, and you can try the other ones. The other ones really like to a window, it just gives you a thin border with no buttons except for the close one up here. So that's when you see like little floating toolbars and things like that. So let's leave it as sizable, which is the default value, and move along. Now, how do we stop that pesky user maximizing our form when it's set to fix single? Well, you take the maximize box and you set it to false, which means it disables the max button, user can't click on it, take it away from them. All right, same thing for the minimize box. If you do false, all of a sudden you lose the minimize box and the user can't minimize it. So it's really up to your program if you want to turn them on or off. Okay, and it even disables them up here as well, which is quite handy in some respects. But that's essentially that. Okay, let's come down a little bit. So, show icon. Do you want to see the icon in the top left? Yes or no? There you go. There's your answer. 
Okay, and then we've got show in taskbar. Now this one's interesting because by default, if I press play, my form gets shown in the taskbar down here. However, if I disable them, yep, it doesn't get shown. Now that can be good and bad. It's entirely up to you. If you've got a dumb user and they click on something, then they find it really hard to get back unless they know their good old alt-tab trick. But it's entirely up to you what you want to do with your program. As we come down, let's have a look at some more settings. Start position, this is where the form will start. By default, Windows chooses the most likely position for your form. All right, so that's Windows default location. However, we've got center screen, which just jams it bloop, in the middle of the screen. And personally, I think this is the most logical setting. But you've also got other ones like default bounds and location. And then you've got center parent. So if this form belongs to another form or a previous form, then it will be in the middle of that form, Okay, no matter where the user puts it. So that one also is quite useful at times. All right, navigating along. Topmost. This, all, this used to be called always on top in the old versions of Windows. But topmost essentially means this is set to true. Okay, I click on something else and that form is still there. Okay, very handy for dialogues and different things that need to come up and perhaps even games if this is the way you want to go about it. All right, so topmost can be very, very handy, especially for audio players. Transparency key, this one could be quite cool. Now this is just going to, if you select a certain color, anything on this form of that color is going to come transparent. So I know the background color of this form right now is control. So if I actually go to system and set it to control, have a look at this. That could be good and bad. I think it looks cool, but it also could be quite terrible. Anyway, I think it looks quite cool to start with. Anyway, last one, let's have a look at this window state. Okay, by default, normal means it's just going to pop up and be there. Right, but we can also start at minimized or maximized. So if I press minimized and play my program, it's going to be down underneath the toolbar. Obviously, I turned off the taskbar, so I can't see it, so I can't recover it. But anyway, that's just something you can play around with as well. So they're the main properties of just a typical Windows form. All right. Hopefully, you can play around with them, get used to them. I skipped over things such as background color and different stuff like that because I've dealt with them before and you're going to deal with them many, many times with all your different controls. Right? But I think what I should probably demo right now is how to add a second form to a project, which is quite simple. All right? If you come up to Windows Application 1 on the right in your Solution Explorer, you right-click on the project, go Add, and then go Windows Form. Now it is really, really good practice to name your second form straight away. So if this form is going to be a logon form, you can call it FRM Login. And bam, you've got form login, it's ready to go, it's named for you, you don't have to worry about it. So there's the second form. And one thing to note too is that double clicking on these forms will take you between each design. You can also right click and go view code. And you'll have separate pieces of code for each form. Okay. So that's just one thing to note there. All right. And now everybody is we're going to look at the different functions that you can use when interacting with forms. Okay, so functions you've got to remember are like actions, okay, that perform a certain feature or function or action or whatever else you want to call it. And I'm going to utilize this button that I've got right here and zoom in quickly. And I'm going to put some code here just to show you different actions you can have with your form. Okay, now if you want to affect the form that the code is sitting on, so for example, if I want the first form or form main to close, when I click this button, you can't type in form main and put a dot after it. Okay, you actually have to refer to the form that the code is on as me. Okay, so it refers to the instance of this form, okay, or form main. Right, and this is pretty straightforward. So if you want to be able to close the form, you go me.close. Now, I explained this ages and ages ago, but I'll just quickly rehash it. This purple little box refers to an action a function, or a function, whatever you want to call it, all right? or a command even. And what this will do is just simply close the form that's currently, the button is on, I should say. So I should probably change the properties so I can see the form again, shouldn't I? 
So let's go normal and let's go show in taskbar. And there we go. I should turn the transparency key off too. But anyway, so when I click the form, it closes the form. And because there's no other forms open, it closes the application as well. All right. So that's the close command. Pretty straightforward. Now, if you wanted to just, let's say, just hide the form. Now, this is completely different. The close destroys it in memory. It gets rid of it. But hide actually takes the form and just visually turns it off. So if I click my button, you'll notice that the form is gone. I can't see it anymore. However, you can see my program is still running. All right. So please be careful between the difference between close and hide. If you just want to simply turn the form off visually, then use dot hide, but realize it's not going to close your program if it's hidden. Dot close will close your program if it's the last one. All right. Those aside, those are pretty much the most important ones you're going to use, the hide and close for certain forms. But what if I want to show the next form or another form? And so for instance, I've got this form logon, and let's say when I click the button, I want the login form to appear. Very simply, quite easy, type in the name of the other form, so form login dot show. Okay, press F5, click the button, and there it is. There's my form login. Now one thing to note, the current settings of my project are that when they click the last, or sorry, when they close the first form that has opened in my program, it closes the whole application. So if I close this form, the whole thing closes down. All right. Now, you may have seen that when I typed in show, there's actually two of them, the show and the show dialogue, okay, which is quite interesting. The difference is show makes the form appear, show dialogue, makes it so I can't interact with any other form of my program until this one is closed. Okay, so you can see I'm trying to click on the other form and it just flashes at me. But if I close this, I can interact with form one again. All right. So there's four main functions for you. There's close, hide, show, and show dialogue. Okay, they're pretty much the only ones you're ever going to have to use when it comes to forms. All right. And that means I'm going to show you one last thing. I'm going to show you different events of the form. So what that means, events are different things that trigger the form to go off. I'm going to quickly get rid of this setting for transparency key because it's annoying me. There are four main events, okay? And the first one is quite easy. If I double click on the form to go to my code, you'll see it opens up in form load. So whatever code you put inside this sub is going to execute when the form is loaded. So let me put a quick message box. Whoop, I should probably use the long one. All right, I'm just going to go hello, just like so. Press play, and see it comes up just before the form appears. All right, so that is form load. But different events that you can use, okay, up the top right here, let's change this guy up here, and let's look at three different other events. So what's the opposite of loading? Well, closing. So if we scroll up, it's actually called form closed or form closing. Now the difference is quite obvious, but let me just quickly go through it. So closing is when the form is being told to close down. So I'm going to steal that message box and put it in form closing. And hit play. So click that, it says hello, and then it shuts down. So it's got the message to shut down. So the other one, let's have a look at form close. So it's when the form actually shuts down, visually goes away and is destroyed. So I click that, off it goes. Okay, so there's a slight difference in timing between those two events. They're very, very similar, but you must bear in mind that they have got that difference between this one is while it's happening, this one is just after the fact. The last one that's probably more or less interesting is resize. Okay, so when I change the size of my form, this event is going to trigger. So let me click start. It resized straight away. And look at this, I'm barely even touching that and it's resizing it. And there you go. So I can't maximize it to show that off. Yeah, see it's firing off every time I try and resize this form. But anyway, that's pretty much it when it comes to forms. So you've got those main properties. You've only got a quick way of adding a second form, four functions and four events that really mean something. Okay, and in the next video, we're going to delve into a good old friend, 
the button because he's pretty darn important. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video today. It was quite short and it was quite simple, but that's what these videos are going to be like. Again, if you would like to start creating some programs, go into my other playlist and let's start creating some calculators and whatnot. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next video.